I'm luckily uh, pretty healthy and have been. Um, my uh, family doctor uh, noted that I had uh, high cholesterol maybe 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, I was on Lipitor to lower it r roughly to, till about a year and a half ago. And uh, I quit taking it and switched and started taking uh, red rice yeast and cinnamon. I exercised a bit more and uh, lowered it that way. Um, However, I just wondered what your, your thoughts were on cholesterol levels in general, uh, red rice yeast, and um, I couldn't take aspirin uh, with Libitor, and also aspirin, if, 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 you, if you thought there was any use in continuing to, to uh, take red rice yeast, um, if, uh, I don't know how aspirin might interact with that, or any, uh, th those are the three things I'm okay. concerned about. Thank well, you. let's talk about the first one, cholesterol. If there's already been a, basically a selling of a pig and a poke to the American public, it's been the cholesterol story. It's a very nice story. Your cholesterol levels are high, you're going to die. Oh, I don't want to die. How do I lower them? Well, take the Lipitor and take it the rest of your life. Well, let's take a look at that story. Cholesterol is an integral component of every cell in the body. It was so dangerous, why is it in the body in the first place? Uh, second part of the story. The statins, like Lipitor, were not the first drugs to lower cholesterol. They were the 20th. The first 19 drugs developed by the drug industry, and they all lowered cholesterol, basically increased death. Well, that's not a good idea. Uh, and then the 20th, which was of the statins, finally lowered cholesterol, and people actually, some people actually lived longer. They said, finally, after one out of, you know, one out of 20 tries, if I got one hit out of 20, I would not be in the major leagues. That, that's basically, that's a loser. Now, why did basically the statins have any benefit? Well, it turned out the statins, unbeknownst to anybody, also had anti-inflammatory effects, just like an aspirin does. Uh, but there was a recent article last December in the uh, British Medical Journal when they did you know, long-term studies, and they said, yes, if you've already had a heart attack, then taking a statin makes sense. If you don't have a heart attack and you have high cholesterol, it makes no sense taking a statin. And let's go even further back in time. How did the cholesterol story emerge? Well, it turns out the Framingham Heart Studies. But if you read them closely, they say that, yes, if you're below age 47 and you have high cholesterol, you're more likely to get a heart attack. If you're age 47 to 70, then of really high cholesterol really doesn't have much role in determining whether or not you're going to get a heart attack. And if you're beyond age 70, the higher your cholesterol levels, the more likely you are to live. They say, well, no one told me about that because it doesn't fit the story. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, but let's think about now the, the, the primary drug that does reduce mortality. It's called an aspirin. Does it lower cholesterol? No. Does it lower inflammation? Yes. So basically, we, we have gone full circle from, and not, when I said Boston University Medical School, there was a raging controversy in the area of, con of heart disease. Was it caused by cholesterol or inflammation? You had the inflammation guys on this side, and the cholesterol boys over here, fighting tooth and nail. But eventually they develop a test, a finger prick test. And you can measure cholesterol. Nobody had developed a, a test for measuring inflammation. So they said, we can now show that basically cholesterol, once the statins came out, this is our a winner. So they jumped on the bandwagon. Uh, so again, we're now switching back and saying, yes, heart disease is an inflammatory disease. So again, that, uh, and the statins do have some anti-inflammatory actions. But, but that's why they're successful if you've already had a heart attack. And since you haven't had a heart attack, statins are probably not the right thing for you. But you said you were basically using red uh, rice yeast. I feel like Sally sells seashores at the seashore. Well, a red rice yeast contains a statin. It's called lovastatin. And Merck Sharp and Dome, who used to sell that as a drug, 
raise holy hell with people selling red rice yeast because say, you're selling a drug. And you, actually it was. You were selling a drug that you have no idea if you're taking too much or too little, and that's why your cholesterol levels are dropping. You are taking an un unregulated statin. So that, um, uh, and do statins have some side effects? Yeah. Uh, they're the only drug known in the medical science that can increase the levels of arachidonic acid. For every percentage point you drop in cholesterol, you raise the levels of arachidonic acid by an equal amount. That's why cardiologists, they love statins, they lower cholesterol. Neurologists, they hate statins because they increase neuroinflammation. So again, that as we, we find as most things, when you get a little deeper into the details, it gets a little more murky and uh, usually follow the money trail. And the money trail usually drives the story that's being told. Uh, the inflammation story is a harder story for doctors to understand. It's more, more complex. But it's, well, it, it's fortunate that's the real story. So uh, again, number one thing, if you're looking to basically live longer, reduce inflammation. Uh, now, living longer could be not getting Alzheimer's, uh, not getting heart disease, not getting cancer. Doesn't matter what the, uh, the end game is, you're going to decrease the likelihood if you can uh, keep the inflammation under control. And again, the number one tool you have is not some drug, it will be the diet. It's harder to work with. You have to pay attention. It's so much easier to buy the drug down at the drugstore, put it in your mouth, it takes no more than 15 seconds a day. Because that's all people are willing to expend to maintain their health, 15 seconds a day. But if you really want to maintain your health, you're looking at about three hours a day of hard work, making meals, eating the meals, uh, doing exercise, doing stress reduction. People say, oh, this, oh, this, this longevity is too hard. But that, that's what it takes. So again, you, you, uh, we're basically doing, uh, just making a substitution of a regulated drug for an unregulated drug. And that's why the cholesterol levels are dropping. But the cholesterol story is one that simply does not play well scientifically.